for joining us today, Rebecca. I know it's early in Arizona. Thank you. It's an honor and pleasure to be with you all today. I appreciate you guys having me. Well, it's an honor for us. Um, so let's dive into this these questions here. Um, I guess that as an AI and data protection and privacy expert, um, your spring has been a tad bit more busy than usual, has it? Yeah, it has. I, I think it's one thing that people need to keep in mind when we talk about AI and machine learning is it's not new. You know, AI has been around since actually 1950, machine learning since 1950. What we really see a fruition on is how that's being used in personal data and how that's been used by really anybody in the world now can use that. That's the big changes that are having. And as we see that, it ends up being how you can protect your personal data, how you can protect your intellectual property and things along those lines. That's what we see that's really going fast forward on steroids right now. And um, from a business perspective, how has the AI, or if we say AI revolution to, to make it easier, how has it changed how companies focus on data protection and privacy? Well, right now, I'll be honest with you, many companies are kind of scrambling. It's kind of like hope and pray it's going to be okay. And that's not a good strategy. I think one of the things that we see with leading technologies is the technologies come up first. And then us as governance, risk and compliance people are playing catch up. Um, hopefully in the future, that might change. Hopefully we might be one with the, the journey on product, but that's what we're seeing. And I tell people, as we say here in the United States, Maybe some of the places in the world is once the horses are out of the barn, it's really hard to go ahead and get them back. So now we're trying to figure out some frameworks and things like that to have responsible AI um, go along those lines. But one of the things I tell individuals to really be careful about and companies about is just to have a data lake to have a data lake. What's in the data lake? Still garbage in or misstated data going into your data lake? All that can do is that can be fruition out there quicker. And I'll give you an example. I even, you know, if I, I went to chat GTP yesterday and I went ahead and did my bio, my bio is completely wrong. Um, it's not even close to being me. I don't know where they got some of the stuff. I will tell people, anyone out there, no, I never worked for Girl Scouts of America. I don't know where it got that. But you still have to be able to be careful with the data that's out there. Um, that's holistically what's looking at it. Um, from a personal perspective, from a corporate perspective, one of the things is is that if you if you're not monitoring what people are putting into the data lake, even from your own individuals, you know, are they putting your intellectual property out there? Are they putting any government? Um, excuse me, it could be government sensitive, but it could be your company sensitive information out there in that data lake. And then what? Who owns that property? And where does it go to? So those are the things out there that I think are very dangerous. True, you can use on-premise only versions of it. But most people are, are going ahead and allowing the people to connect like there's over a thousand out there that they can just connect to. And then you from a security, privacy and compliance perspective really need to be managing your traffic. And you do that mainly through education on, on the proper use of that data. So it gives you a little holistically so we can get talking down the questions today. Thank you. So data protection laws and regulations play a vital role in, in preventing cyber, cyber crime. Um, can you speak to the role of these laws and regulations in ensuring data privacy in the in the AI era? Uh, 